Hi everyone and welcome to the Big Data Deep Dive with The Cube here on EMC TV. I'm Richard Schlesinger and I'm here with tech industry entrepreneur and Wikibon analyst Dave Vellante and Silicon Angle CEO and Editor-in-Chief John Furrier. And we're talking about those folks who really break ground in the big data area, the big data pioneers. So welcome to you both. Thanks for coming by. It's always a pleasure to see you. Um, there are a lot of pioneers out there. Uh, because this is a big developing industry with a lot of money to be made. And um, I guess we're just beginning to imagine the potential of, of this space. And, uh, you know, I mean, you guys have been around talking to pretty much everybody. What, what are you hearing about the real pioneering efforts going on? Well, I think the pioneers are, are driven out of the open source movement of uh, software, and that's really where it all started in this big data space, because the databases in the technical world has been really actions, been the, the ability to store data, and that's the core, core, core issue. And from there, um, the software developers, and then now the PhDs and the math geeks with big data have really taken it to another level. So you know, you're seeing uh, at a technical level the programmers, and then on the business side, the practitioners who are putting it to work. So it's really kind of a combination of, of two two sets of folks. So Dave, where are we in this pioneering era? I mean, are we at the beginning, do you think? Do, do people understand the, 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 the limits, or, are the, or is the sky the limit? I think the sky is the limit. It's the first inning, Richard, if I can use the baseball analogy. And I think John's right. I mean, you've got the, the alpha geek world and the business world are colliding in a really interesting way. And what the alpha geeks are doing is solving the problem of how do I take all this unstructured data and bring structure to it, all this exhaust, this data exhaust, and actually analyze it and bring structure to it. And then the second dimension that we hear from practitioners in the Wikibon community is how do we then create value out of that data? How do we package it? How do we monetize it? How do we distribute it and put it out there? You know, the, the, the numbers of, of terabytes and petabytes and other kinds of bytes that they're just making up names for, it's astonishing. I mean, we were talking about numbers that people haven't really, you know, experienced before, encountered before. So uh, EMC TV, we, we, we produced a, a video to give a sense of the, the scope of the challenges and the opportunities of big data. I'd like to show that to you. Take a look. Overall, the data market just continues to explode. In the past, people might have thought about you know, five or 10 terabyte environments as big. When we talk about big data now, we're having customers that are putting up multiple petabytes of data that they're trying to bring together to analyze. And increasingly, it's not just structured data, but also unstructured data as well, with multiple data sources and multiple data types. If you look at any company, probably the preponderance of data that's managed within any organization sits in today, siloed data warehouses. Service has their own, support has their own, sales has their own. You have repetitive, redundant amounts of data scattered around, inaccessible from anybody, except for those who know where to look and know what to ask and know how to go about it. So the genesis of Greenplum was tackling that problem really hiring the world's best database experts here in the, in the Bay Area and getting really exciting about going after the innovation in this space, uh, leveraging commodity hardware. Greenplum's technology was, was at a point where we could leverage on a lot of the emerging trends that were happening in computing so that we literally could make the process of storing and analyzing data 10 times faster and more cost effective. Anytime you can do something that's not incremental, 20 or 30 percent better, but you can go to a customer and say, look, this is going to run maybe 10 to 50 times faster than you can do it today. It's a complete mind shift in how they think about storing and using data. Greenplum allows you to not only virtualize the data warehouse instance, for example, or federate all of the data warehouses, but it provides a common interface or a common language for humans, by and large, to be able to ask their question in real time. And essentially, be able to make sure that that question is addressed to every piece of data within the organization that's within the Greenplum domain. And so it's really exciting for us to be If you here. think about how business is going to evolve, Business is going to evolve from being data-centric inside their enterprise, so solving the problem that you have today, how do I get access to all of this information, to now my data that I have is actually valuable 
outside of this organization. Businesses are spending a huge amount of money in their infrastructure to get and store this data. Right? That's already a spent investment. Now, just being able to analyze it allows them to get business value from the data they're already creating at a tremendous rate. There is this idea that you know knowledge workers are generating information that can be captured uh, on a real-time basis, and you could capture all of that that's coming in and then use that potentially to serve up another data mart or parse through that as well. So we see across sectors that information is becoming sort of the new business battleground or the new currency to sort of drive how effective a business will be. I love this notion of uh, information being the new battleground um, in business. I wonder, um, you know, how, how many CEOs understand this idea, understand the explosion that's either happening or about to happen in big data? I think increasingly they're starting to understand and putting forth mandates to their organization to try to identify ways in which they can use data as big value, uh, as, as new value. I think people have looked at um, IT for a long time as a lot of wasteful effort around making stuff work that didn't give differentiable advantage. And I think that's now changing with big data. People are looking at how you can write algorithms and get new data sources and, as I was saying before, package things in a way that do bring competitive advantage. Yeah, CEOs um, have had a real big moment with big data and that was the iPad. When the iPad came out, executives can actually hold an iPad and see what real-time instrumentation or analytics can do for their business. And they said, I want this product. So it forced IT to de design for the iPad and so big data really helped that and on the consumer side the iPhone really was the beginning of what has become obviously a consumer market with big data whether it's social media or something else. But It's almost like a light went on you know when they realized we, we have all this information anyway if we could figure out a way to analyze it apply this analytics as you guys like to say to, to that to the data, we could, we, you know, we could be sitting on a gold mine here. Well, not only the gold mine, they, as Dave mentioned about top line revenue versus the cost cutting angle, it's really become a competitive advantage. So the smart CEOs out there are looking at the big data opportunity as a competitive advantage and to re-architect their businesses using big data to actually have an advantage across the board in every part of their business, hiring, supplying customers with products, collecting money, uh, all kinds of things. So it affects all aspects of business. And, and I I guess, one, of, I'm sorry. one of the things we've been tracking in Wikibon is it's not trivial from an organizational standpoint, you have to organize to create business value out of this. So we live in a world of silos. We heard that on the, on the video from EMC TV. And I think they're going to have big data silos. I mean, that's just the world we live in. But the key is, how do you organize data so that it's a resource that all these silos can take advantage of? And everybody's talking about big data now, too, so there'll be more advantage. I guess you can't really talk about big data for too long without talking about Hadoop. And I know that you guys have been around that for a lot. Talk to me about that. Well, Hadoop is, is exploding, and the amazing thing to me, John, is it came out of, and you, you've interviewed Doug Cutting a number of times, but it came out of a, a research paper that was written by Google, and Doug Cutting read it and said, wow, I could apply that to a commercial open source enterprise type of, of operation. Okay, so let me do this. Hadoop for idiots. What, just one sentence. What, is, what does Hadoop allow you to do? So back in the day, if you had a big data problem, what you would do is you'd buy a big box, you know, Unix box, and you would put as much data into that box as possible. And that box was your data temple. Well, when Google had to index the web, it realized, well, we can't put this into a box. We can't put it into a structured database. So we have to leave the data where it is. Petabytes and petabytes of data, leave it where it is instead of trying to force it through a big pipe and just bring five megabytes or gigabytes of code to the data. And that really is the concept that set Hadoop off, right? Yeah, I mean, Hadoop, bottom line, if you want a bumper sticker, it is. It's the ability to store massive, massive amounts of information that you don't know what you're going to do with it yet, but store it in a way that you can get at it really fast in a very low cost way. And that, that fundamentally requires a different technology, uh, but that's the game changer of Hadoop. The ability to store this at a very, very low cost and get it very, very fast. And so you are a big fan of Hadoop and the man who created it. Yeah. You recently talked to him. Why don't you tee that up? And well, this is an interview that we did with Doug Cutting, the founder of Hadoop, uh, and then obviously now open source with Apache. Um, I was with Cloudera for a year and a half in their offices in Palo Alto, and it's my interview with Doug Cutting. Hope you enjoy the father of Hadoop. And a rock star, according and to you. He's a rock star, yeah, he's a rock star. OK, 
Okay, we're back here at Hadoop Summit 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host for this segment is Jeff Kelly, the lead analyst at Wikibon.org on big data, the best big data analyst on the planet. Obviously, Dave Vellante can't be here, Jeff, so you're going to sub in for his, his spot. Uh, I'm, I'm playing Dave today. That's, I'm super excited that's to be here because, one, I love this ecosystem of Hadoop, and it's just a lot of the friendly faces that we've seen over the years, and our next guest, Doug Cutting, is one of those friendly faces uh, from my time when I was sitting in the Hadoop office, uh, Cloudera office, or Hadoop office, the Cloud Air office, where Doug would come in a couple times a week. Doug, welcome back to theCUBE. Hey, Sean, good to be here. You've been on many times. Uh, you're the founder, inventor, co-founder, inventor of Hadoop as you're being known as a celebrity. I knew you when you were just a cloud, you know. I, was not the, yeah, oh <laughs> I knew <boy>. you when. <laughs> I wanted to get your perspective on the future of Hadoop. Um, you've been involved from the beginning, you're in the community, you're at Cloudera. What's, what's going on? I mean, what's your view right now of Hadoop as it is, and where is it going? We're, I mean, we're seeing tremendous growth. We're seeing um, industry after industry start to um, realize that this is a, a, a way that they can improve their businesses. That they have uh, data that's um, passing through their hands uh, that they can benefit from uh, if they could uh, get a handle on it, if they could save it and, and analyze it uh, effectively, um, and that Hadoop can, can help them with that, can provide them the tools. Um, so it's it's pretty exciting to see that, uh, and the, you know the predictions, the projections are are huge. Can you talk about some of the dynamics going on right now? Because obviously, the environment's changed. I, I think there's so much to be done um, that the only way to really do it effectively is to collaborate. You know, we listen to our listen to what our customers want and try to make sure that we're we're making them happy, uh, and and not not look to to competitors. I mean, the, the basic platform uh, we're we're adding adding new um, uh, you know really needed features, the the high availability stuff. Um, uh, makes the um, uh, the real-time nature of HBase, uh, you know, as, as an as an online store, um, uh, useful. If you if you can no rely on it being up 24/7, um, uh, and and now you can um, uh, with the, with the current releases. Um, uh, so from from those real you know fundamental um, uh, core layers, all, there's a, still a lot of um, fit and finish work at the out, at the outside, making it really easy to incorporate new data sets, to visualize results. Um, uh, to deploy and monitor uh, the, these these clusters, um, all these things uh, need, need need a lot of work. I mean, it's a young technology still, um, and uh, it's it's getting more mature. I mean, I think the the key advantage of HBase uh, there's a, there's a number of distinctions between it and other um, uh, you know uh, quote unquote no SQL uh, data stores. Um, but I think the key advantage of HBase is just this degree of integration with the rest of the Hadoop ecosystem. So um, uh, I, I think that's that's something I look for when um, we're sort of tr trying to figure out what are the next major components to, to join the ecosystem, uh, is how well can they integrate with what's there already. Um, uh, because you know that you want to make things seamless, you want to make moving from one tool to another as easy as possible. You don't want to have to be importing and exporting your data, you want to be able to access it natively um, uh, in, from one tool to another. So that's the, that's the direction I think we really ought to be pushing the, the ecosystem. Tell us, tell the folks out there, Doug, now that you're a big time celebrity um, <laughs> and getting bigger every day, um, and you're tall too as well, uh, what you're working on, what you're, what you're working on right now, I mean primarily in terms of your focus, and what you're excited about right now. Um, you know, I've got uh, three things that I tend to spend my time on. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm the chairman of the Apache Software Foundation, uh, so uh, Cloudera donates my time, uh, you know, roughly a third of my time um, to um, uh, volunteering at Apache and trying to keep things running smoothly there um, uh, as best I can. Um, uh, I do a lot of um, uh, uh, Sort of at work as a spokesman for uh, Cloudera and for Apache, so I spend I spend time out um, on the road talking with folks. Um, uh, you know, and if you if you spend a day on the road, there's days on either side preparing and recovering from that. Uh, so it's it that that's a, a big a big time sink uh, to do that work. And then I'm still um, uh, working on code, still still uh, you know still hacking. So I wonder, uh, you know, Wiki, we at Wikibon just uh, put out a report around kind of the enterprise readiness of the, of the Duke. So. If you could, what are maybe the one or two key um, areas of improvement that you've seen over the last, I don't know, six months to a year uh, around making the system, you know, ready to uptime, uh, security, uh, ease of use? What are the kind of the key barriers? Well, I mean, Cloudera's um, uh, been working in uh, in lots of areas, contributing to lots of projects, uh, building um, uh, commercial products uh, to um, help folks run 
uh, Hadoop in production uh, and make that really uh, seamless and, and smooth and, and easy. Um, uh, the community at large, I think probably the, the largest single thing is the um, high availability mm -hmm. uh, in HDFS. Uh -huh. we'll, we'll probably see you at Hadoop, Hadoop World uh, in New York, but, but between now and, and that event, um, what's your key goal and how do you see the Hadoop ecosystem in your preferred future? I mean, what is Hadoop ecosystem going to look like? Um, I mean, I, I just see, uh, I see it's really trying to um, fulfill this promise uh, to, um, that, that, that we, that's out there. Um, people people um, have these great expectations, um, and uh, so we need, to, we need to meet them. Um, we need, to, we need to, to meet the customers, uh, the users, um, uh, uh, find out what, what their um, problems are, how this isn't working for them, and, and make that happen. Um, uh, you know, we're, we've got the, the um, Hadoop 2.0 uh, CDH4 uh, is out in the field. Uh, Cloudera um, released that uh, last week. Yep. Um, and uh, I think over the, the next six months, we'll see widespread adoption of that in production. Um, uh, and that's very exciting. You see HBase exploding? See HBase is going to continue to explode. I think, I think the, um, the, the, the uh, 2.0 stuff really um, helps HBase a lot. There's a whole lot of performance work that went into HGFS um, and MapReduce uh, that we'll see the benefit of. Um, yeah, HBase is just incredible. Uh, it, 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 it's taken off. Um, and, and it's we'll fun to watch. So, yeah. Well, Exciting thanks time. for all your help on the Cube. You've been a great citizen. You've been great to come on. We love having you on. Uh, <laughs> we knew you when <laughs> uh, back in the day. And also, Cloudera has been a great supporter of, of my mission at SiliconANGLE. And uh, Mike Olson and Amr have enabled that. And you guys have been very good on that. So I want to thank you for that. Doug Cutting on the Cube. We'll be right back with more news after the short break. So Doug Cutting, uh, one pioneer, one rock star, of, if you will, John. Uh, but there are, uh, there are others out there who you've talked to. Who else do you have? Yeah, so other pioneers are, so we, at, at EMC World, we interviewed Alpine Data Labs. Now here's a company who's basically taking all this unstructured data and bringing structure to it and allowing you to basically work on large corpus of data very quickly and easily. So let's take a look at my interview with Steve Hillian of Alpine Data Labs. Okay, we're back. This is the spotlight on data science and big data. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and I'm here with my co-host Jeff Kelly, and we're live at EMC World 2012, and the theme of the show is transformation. We've talked a lot yesterday about cloud being the IT trans transformative piece, but really it's data is transforming business, and it's all about packaging information, monetizing information, getting value out of information. That's the business transformation. Of course, there's also a big transformation of skill sets, and EMC talking a lot about that, but today we're talking about really the business impact, the data, the value, the transformation. We're here with Steve Hillian, who's the Chief Product Officer of Alpine Data Labs. Stephen, welcome to theCUBE. Dave, nice to meet you. Great to yep. have you on. And um, so, Chief Product Officer, I asked you off camera, is the product data? And you said yes. Uh, talk yeah, about the, that a little bit. Uh, the product really, as you were saying, is sort of the insights coming out of that data. Uh -huh. um, I think increasingly organizations are either turning their data into value or worrying that they may not be doing that enough. Uh, they've got these mountains of data that are piling up, all the traditional data that they've been getting out of their transactional systems, but now increasingly machine-generated data, web behavior, just m piling up, and the sense of how do we make the most value out of that? How can we use that to really understand our customers better? And that's really what we're about, sort of turning that into deeper analytics than may have traditionally been done in the past, getting real value. So what does Alpine actually sell? So we sell an application that allows you to do predictive analytics on really large quantities of data without having to set up a massive new infrastructure. In fact, what you can do is you can download our product literally off the web, point it at the source of your data, typically going to be sitting in a relational database like Greenplum, for example, uh, and then just start doing predictive analytics. Okay, but so do you have the capability to essentially on the fly build that model within the database? Yeah, that's right. So this actually came out of, that's exactly what we do. 
Um, Sounds like magic. <laughs> well, it certainly took a lot of uh, hard work, and in fact, uh, I can't claim all the credit ourselves. This actually came out a lot of early work that was being done at companies like MySpace and Amazon mm -hmm. uh, and Greenplum itself, actually, and also some academic work that was happening at uh, Berkeley. Uh, under the leadership of Professor Hellestein there, Joe Hellestein, who's uh, sort of expert. So talk a little bit more about why uh, in database predictive analytics. I mean, what's the real appeal from a value prop standpoint? Well, I think a big thing for, for, for me that sort of really um, inspired me when I first heard about uh, Alpine, got involved with them at the founding and decided eventually to join the company, um, was that they, they just made the whole thing so much easier. Um, so I had been involved in many analytics projects really for the last decade where the process of getting the data and refining the data, building the models and iterating and so on, it wasn't even iterative, right? I mean, it's just like highly waterfall, highly static, sort of one-shot model development. It's like, I hope this works. I hope this is the right data set. And if we need to go back to the well, it's just too painful. Um, and what Alpine was doing, um, working with Greenplum, because there's actually an early spin-off from Greenplum, is going into customer sites and say, just give it, point us at your data and we'll find something interesting, like this afternoon. <laughs> um, and so, Instant I, ROI. Instant yeah. ROI. I mean, I remember the first time we used it, um, so this is when I was working uh, with my data scientist team actually using Alpine. I loved it so much, I joined the company. Um, I went into a, a, a telco, which had no data scientists, right? Never done churn models or advanced analytics before. Um, and literally by the end of that day, we just took the source of their data, did the analytics directly where it sat, and we had churn models, pretty decent, not like maybe production level, but pretty decent churn models that they could actually use. So you could see things immediately, trends that you could act on, you're saying. Yeah. When you go into customer situations, uh, what's the mindset that you typically find? Do you have to do a lot of evangelizing, education to get, get people to understand this? Or You do. I mean, that's a real challenge for us because there is a certain mindset around mm -hmm. it. But on the other hand, I think people get tired of the existing infrastructures and the existing paradigms and one trick that we've learned is if you can go into an organization and demonstrate value quickly mm -hmm. uh, just go after a small problem right we've been doing a lot of work closely with the uh, data scientist team at EMC Greenplum mm -hmm. and one of the things they've gotten really good at is just going into a customer as a part of a pre-sales activity or an early engagement maybe they've just gotten the infrastructure the you know Hadoop or the Greenplum database up and running and go in and say okay let's 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 do something right let's prove value quickly like quick win, quick kind of win, then yeah. the, that the light bulb kind of goes off and they that's see the right. power yeah, uh, of right. what predictive that's analytics right. can do. All right, Steve, uh, that was great. I okay, really great. Uh, appreciate the insights. You going to the Data Sciences Summit? Are you going to be there? Yeah, I'm super excited about there? it. Yeah, I'm going to be speaking tonight at the opening session and I'm going to be interviewing a, a really cool team of really prominent data scientists and people involved in this community about like how do you build that dream team of data scientists. So that's mm -hmm. going to be a really fun discussion. Oh, wow, that's outstanding. Yeah, that's yeah, right. good. So, so we've, had, we've had several on here today. Jeff's interviewed some, and as have I, and so... Yeah. Uh, well, congratulations on, oh, uh, on the company and where yeah. you're at. Very yeah. exciting space. Great. You're yeah. really at the heart of it. Steve, yeah. thanks very yeah, much thanks for coming for your on the question. I love this idea of, of instant ROI. I can just hear the CEO's ears perk up at, at that one. A lot of pioneers out there. You've been talking to a lot of them. And I really appreciate you sharing your conversations with us. And uh, it's always, always great to hear you and your, your insights and everything. And uh, we'll be uh, back chatting with you some more. But we'd like to thank all of the audience for joining us at this point. There's more to come on Big Data Deep Dive, so be sure to stay tuned to the conversation with my new best friends at theCUBE right here on EMC-TV.